Hello everyone and welcome to Microsoft Access 2016 Basics. My name is Steve Bishop and in this video we're going to talk about how to insert new data using the Insert Into query. When we need to insert new data into our tables, you might have a table like this, one that has an ID, a first name, an age, and a salary. And we need to add one new record to this table. Let's say Jane, who's age 18 and has a salary of 35. Well, that's where we need to use the Insert Into SQL Query. So let's take a look. So in this video, what I'm going to do is add a new record to the people table. And you might be tempted to go straight into the people table and just start typing in some data. But really, that's a bad idea. You should never actually interact directly with tables. You should always try to make changes to your tables using queries. And then you can trigger those queries using some sort of user interaction through a user interface to have a bit more refined control over exactly what kind of actions are occurring to the data. Somebody just going to the table and changing values could easily cause mistakes. So let's go ahead and add a new query. I'm going to go up to Create and go to the Query Design. And I'm actually not going to select a table. I'm going to go ahead and click Close on this little prompt. But then I'm going to click on the Append option here. And then I'm going to select from this dropdown which table do I want to append to. And that would be the People table. So let's go ahead and click OK. And now what I need to do is I need to select which fields am I going to append to. And so I'm going to click on this drop down that appears when you click inside of this append to. And I'm going to select first name. And then I'm going to go over here and I'm going to select last name. And then date of birth and salary. And I don't have a picture, so I'm going to skip that. Uh, I'm also going to skip over file data, name, and type, because that's all predicated upon having a picture. Then I'm going to select active, and finally, person type. So these are the fields that I want to make changes to. But where do I add the data? Well, that's going to be here in the field section. So let's go ahead and say we're going to add Jane. And you'll notice that I'm using quotation marks for the values. So we're going to do Jane. Then we're going to set for a last name, let's say Tolleson. Then we'll say date of birth is, let's go ahead and use, this is when you're entering in a date, you need to use hashtags around the value. So we're going to say hashtag 03, uh, and then we'll say 2001. Actually, we need to put some sort of day, don't we? So we'll do uh, the 21st of 2001. Then for salary, let's go ahead and add 35,000. For active, we'll go ahead and set this to true. And person type, let's go ahead and set that to one. So Jane here is going to be an employee. Now let's go ahead and click on run. And it says, you're about to append one rose. Go ahead and click yes. And now if we look at the people table, hmm, what happened? Well, let's close out of our people table and reopen. And now you'll see there's Jane Tolleson. So really, we just needed to exit and reopen to see this new information. Let's go take a look at the query itself. So I'm going to go back to query three. And I'm going to right click in this open area and select the SQL view. And what you're going to find is that there's now this insert into statement that this query starts out with. And then we select which table we're going to insert into. Then what comes after that is a set of parentheses. And inside of the parentheses are each one of the fields of that people table that we're going to make the new values for. So we see date of birth, salary, active, and person type. And now another interesting thing has occurred. Select. Where have we seen a select statement before? Well, whenever we're running a query to go find some information, like if we look inside of query one here, notice that it is a select query. So if that's a select query that goes and finds this information from a table, could we possibly use a select query to insert data into another table? 
The answer is absolutely. Yes, you can. So how can we do that? Well, let's go ahead and create a new table to insert some records into. So I'm going to go up to the Create tab here again and select Table Design. And we'll once again, uh, well, this time, let's go ahead and say ID, but we're not going to make it an auto number. Instead, we're just going to say a regular number. So it's going to be the primary key, but it is not auto number. Notice that we are not going to select the auto number option here for the data type. We're just going to use number, okay? Because we're going to insert this ID into this table. We're going to get that ID from the people table because what we're going to do is we're going to add all of these number twos, which is our customers. We're going to add all of our customers to a new table that's going to be our customer table. So let's go ahead and say ID, number, and then we're going to say first name is going to be short text. Last name is also short text. And is there anything else inside here that we want? Well, I don't think anything else is really relevant. All I want is the first name and last name and the ID. I don't care about date of birth, salary, active, or attached pictures or person type because this is presumably going to be a customer table. So I already know what kind of person this is. Okay, let's go ahead and save this. And let's name this table customers. Great. So now I've got my customers table. And if I take a look at it, I've got nothing in here. So let's go ahead and write a query that's going to insert some records from our people table into our customers table. So let's go back to our query three. And instead of this select statement here, I'm going to need to change this. I'm going to right click on the tab and go to design view for this query. And we need to get rid of all of these fields. We're just going to select that, select that. We're just deleting everything that's in here. OK, and it even took care of the append to for us when we deleted the fields. So really, our SQL query is just an insert into people and a select statement. So all right, let's go back to the design view. And now we can go ahead and add that people table to this query. So I'm going to right click in this open area and select show table. And this is going to reopen that show table window where I can select the people table and add it. We'll go ahead and close that window. And now let me just expand on this a little bit. And remember, I want to get the ID, the first name, and the last name. Now, those just so happen to also be the same field names of the table that I want to insert into, right? So customers has first name, last name, and ID. And then the, the people table also has first name, last name, and ID. So all of this is going to line up perfectly for me. But if I needed to, I could specify a different, uh, a different append to if it happened to be differently labeled, right? So if it was just last instead of last name or first instead of first name, you could just go in here to the append to and select from the table that you're appending to which, uh, which one of the column names you're actually wanting to go to. And if we just take a look at the SQL view here, we'll see insert into people, ID, first name, last name. And we're selecting from the people table, the ID column, the first name column, and the last name. And this is really just a select statement. All that's happened is above our select statement, we now have the insert into, which specifies which table we're inserting into and which columns that we want to insert into. Now, we need to make sure that in our select statement, the number of fields that we are selecting perfectly match the same number of fields that we are inserting into. And not only that, but we need to make sure they're in the same order. So the ID field of the people table, actually, I don't want to insert into people. I want to insert into customers. Aha, we have a problem, and I just noticed it. Let's go ahead and change this from people to customers. So I'm going to go back to the design view. We're going to go to the Design tab. And if we click on this Append again, you'll see Table is People. That's not right. I want to go into the Customers table. We'll click on that. And now our Append to should be pointing to the Customer table. And there we go. So now you can see it's only those limited lists of, uh, of columns in the Customer table. And if we go to the SQL view, there we go. We fixed it from People table to Customers table. So if that was a little confusing, I apologize. but 
Now we're on the right track. Now we're inserting into the customer's table from our people table. And once again, just going back, our select statement that's selecting the ID, first name, and last name is a select statement on our people table. But those different columns that we're selecting correspond to the three different columns of our customers table that we're wanting to insert into. They just need to line up properly or else we could get some erroneous data. Okay, so I think we're ready except for one more thing. I only want to get the customers, right? Our people table has more than just customers in it. It has employees and vendors in it. So we need to fix this, right? We need to make sure that we're only getting those with a person type of two. So let's go back to our query three. I'm going to go back into the design view. And now I need to say criteria. I'm going to add another column here for our people table where we're going to say person type, but we're not going to append to any field. Instead, we're going to say in the criteria line that it needs to be a person type of two. And now if we go back to the SQL view, we will see that Axis has just simply added this extra where statement that filters our people table select query to just those people of a person type of two. And if we view this, if we just click on the view, this is actually not going to do any sort of inserting. This is just gonna show us the results of a select query. So these are the, uh, the different people that are going to be inserted into our customer's table. If we wanna actually make this run, then we're gonna to have to go back into the design view. Whoops, wrong button. We're gonna to need to go back into the design view, select this design tab, and then click on run. And once you do that, now it's gonna ask you if you want to truly append these three rows. Let's go ahead and click on yes. And now if we look at our customers table, uh-oh, we need to refresh. Let's close this and reopen customers and boom, there they are. So there's our three customers that were originally inside of our people table. And not only that, but we brought over their IDs, right? We brought over the ID of each one of these individuals in our people table as the ID for our customers table. That way this can actually be a foreign key that points back to the information that's in our people table. So not only can you write a insert into query that specifies specific values by using some sort of quotation marks around the values specifically that you wanna enter and put those in after a select statement but you can also use an actual select statement to pull data from one table and insert it into another. That's pretty cool. Special thanks goes to these members who without their contributions would not make this series possible. Thank you.